<laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, we're gonna be working on Lucas car again. Um, we've got some more Michi parts going in on this thing. So we have two kits that are going on. Both are oil related and we're gonna be jumping right into the install with kit number one, which is? Thermostatic oil cooler. Wrong. Other one. <laughs> oh, uh, oil catch can. That's the one. <laughs> so let's get started. So the first kit that we're gonna be installing is this right here. This is a Mishimoto oil catch can, and this is specifically designed for an FRS, a GT86, or any of these platforms. So it's a direct bolt-on, and there's not gonna be any kind of modifying done to the car to get them to work. Once we install this kit right here, we're gonna be installing this kit. Now this is also an oil-related kit. This is a thermostatic Mishimoto oil cooler kit. So we have the cooler right here, we have the thermostatic sandwich plate, and we have all the other components to mount it all up into place. All is included in this kit, and both of these come with lifetime warranties. So we're gonna jump right into it and install this guy here, as this is the easier of the two. So, Luca, let's get going. So the bumper is off the car. Now, it doesn't need to be removed for this part. So for the first kit, everything that's gonna be done is gonna be found up in the engine bay. So once you pop the hood, you're gonna find the little brace back there, that's where the oil catch can is going to be going, and the hoses that are going from the engine to the kit are gonna be found underneath the intake manifold. So first things first, we're gonna remove this little cover here. So you can just pry it up, and on the bottom side there's two little clips. Luca, spin it. So see those two little clips on the back? Once you take those out, you'll have access to these hoses right here. So looking at the front of the vehicle, on top of the intake manifold, you'll see that there's two hoses. So there's the left one, which is the one that we're going to be removing, and the right one, which is a part of the brake booster. So we're gonna leave the right one alone and only disconnect the left one. So coming from the backside, you should be able to just pull on it and it should come out. There's a little fitting on the intake manifold that's a little bit swollen, which keeps the hose in place. Then from the backside of the engine, you can see that same hose that we were working on. See how it was pulled from that little part there? So if you follow it down, you'll see that it connects way down there. So we're gonna have to remove that from the car. So this here is connected to the engine side, and this is a slightly smaller port than the opposite side right here. So just take note of that when you guys take this off, and take note of that when you put the new hose back on. So next up from the engine bay, you can see we have the intake manifold here, and we need to move back. Take note of this little chassis bracing component back here. There's gonna be one bolt and one nut and stud that need to be removed, so the nut on the right side needs to be removed and we're gonna be using a 12 millimeter socket to take that out. And then following that, we need to disconnect but not remove this bolt that's found on the left. So the oil catch can bracket is gonna slide behind that bolt there on the left and it's gonna go over top of that stud. So what you see here in this cart is everything that you're going to need to install the oil catch can. Everything that's found here on the right are the parts that are gonna be going on the cart except for the old hose and then right here are the parts you're gonna be using. So we're gonna first begin with opening up the oil catch can to show you the, the contents of them. So we have the inlet and outlet port found on top. There's gonna to be a little micron oil filter that's found on the inside. There's a little O-ring found right there in the center. And take a look at what's inside. So this here is gonna separate the oil and the air, and it's gonna keep and trap all the oil inside the lower cartridge part. Now on the bottom side of it too, you can see that there's a little drain port, and to remove it, there's gonna be a little hex bit. So Take that out if you ever want to drain your oil. But we're gonna be putting all this in there. We're gonna be assembling everything. You'll never really need to replace the O-ring because this is essentially a lifetime part. Unless you like actually cross thread it or get it stuck on the threads when you're tightening, you know, you shouldn't have any issues. So let's get started with putting this all together so we can mount this in the car. Now the first step to assemble your oil catch can is to thread in your inlet hose adapters. Now normally to do this, you wanna make a good seal. And there's a couple options to do that. So you guys would normally use something like this to help seal the threads. It's a Permatex thread sealant. In our case, where we don't know the exact type of plastic used for the fitting, it's recommended not to use it on PVC. So to be safe, we are going to use a more traditional Teflon tape to make the sealant. Be sure to thread the Teflon tape on counterclockwise so that when you thread the fitting onto the oil catch can, it doesn't unthread itself. So you just need a little bit to make a couple turns and then you can go ahead and trim the Teflon tape. From there, make sure it's nice and snug on it. Once you're done with the Teflon tape, your thread should look something like this. So it shouldn't come right until the end, and there should be about a thread or so from the beginning to make sure that the threads of the fitting line up properly with the threads of the oil catch can. Grab your oil catch can, and you should be able to thread it in, and the Teflon tape will ensure that there aren't any leaks. Now, if it starts to get tight, 
you can grab a 18 millimeter wrench, put it over the head, and tighten it. Now these fittings, they are plastic, so be careful not to over torque them. You just need them snug and tight. This should be the final product and how the fittings look. The next step is to align the bracket on top of the Mishimoto oil catch can. There are two holes at the top that will align with threads inside of the catch can. You need to align those and then you need to use the provided hardware and washers to attach the bracket to the Mishimoto oil catch can. Because the oil catch can is going to be in the engine bay, it's smart to use a little bit of blue thread locker to make sure that the bolts attaching the bracket to the catch can won't come out. Now that the bracket's on the catch can, we can go ahead and install this portion of the kit in the car. So you can see that we have one of the bolts pre-installed on the mount and it just goes right over top of this chassis component. So we're going to thread that rear bolt in place and it's going to position the oil catch can right behind the engine. We're going to be putting on some silicone paste to help the hoses slide onto the fittings a little bit easier. So we're going to be sliding the bottom portion of this hose onto the fitting attached to the rear side of the block. Once that's slid on, we can attach the upper side of the hose to the right fitting after we slide these hose clamps over the hose. Following the inlet to the oil catch can comes the outlet. So we're first going to begin with installing it onto the intake manifold. So we literally just press it on just like we removed the old one. So there's no clamps or anything securing it into place. So once you have it over top of the little nipple, just push it all the way in and then we can go to the install the opposite side where it mounts to the oil catch can. So these silicone hoses are reinforced as we showed you earlier and they're not made out of rubber, which means they're not gonna deteriorate or degrade on you. So this oil catch can is gonna allow any oil that's going from the engine through the PCV into the intake to be collected inside here. So that there essentially completes the install for the oil catch can. Now the last step to finish it all up is to reinstall the little cover for the intake manifold, push it back into place, and then you're done. The next kit that we're gonna be installing is gonna be the Mishimoto oil cooler. So this is a thermostatic kit that's gonna be installed on the car. So you don't need to do an oil change for this, but it is definitely advisable, considering we're gonna be needing more oil to fill up the capacity of the radiator. So this here will occupy a little bit more engine oil than before, because oil has to completely fill this entire rad. So for the sake of this video, we're going to be removing the intake box along with the intake hose that's leading to the throttle body just to give us a little bit more space. So you can see right here that the oil filter is removed. So we're going to get a little bit of work done over here. We're going to have some hoses going on uh, in the front of the vehicle. So we're just going to take this out so we can give you guys a better shot as to what's going on. Before we're able to install the oil cooler onto the car, we have to first remove six pop rivet clips to hold in this plastic air dam piece. Make sure that the M of the oil cooler and the M on the bracket are both facing the same direction. Place the bracket on top of the oil cooler. Align the four holes at each end. From there, you can grab a bolt, feed it from below, grab a nut, thread it on, and repeat that for all four of the bolts, as well as torque them down. One of the key components of this oil cooler kit is the Mishimoto thermostatic oil sandwich plate. Now the key difference between this and their traditional style sandwich plate is that this has a thermostat built into it, which will only allow the oil to circulate through the oil cooler assembly once it hits a certain temperature. Now this is very good because when you're starting up your car, you don't want all the oil going through your oil cooler and prolonging the startup time of your vehicle. So this will help with regular startups. However, when you get to operating temperature, it will open up and cool the oil. This is particularly helpful, especially if you're living in northern, northern states or in northern countries where you have winters that get below zero or just colder temperatures in general, where the oil sandwich plate will only open up when the vehicle is at operating temperature. First thing you want to do is grab the base plate and a drip of engine oil and lubricate the o-ring on the bottom side. You can place that on top of the OEM oil catch. You can grab your thermostatic sandwich plate, grab another dab of oil, lubricate the o-ring. Be sure to have the threads facing forward and the bung for the thermostat facing the driver's side of the car and place it on top. Then you can grab the catch plate at the top 
lubricate the same o-ring with oil drop it on top of the sandwich plate be sure to have all of the o-rings facing down then you can grab the included bolt thread it in through the top and align every layer of plate following that you can thread it on and torque it to 30 foot pounds these fittings allow the oil lines to attach to the sandwich plate. Now to ensure a proper seal, we're gonna be using some Permatex thread sealant on the threads, mating it to the sandwich plate. After the fittings on the sandwich plate are all torqued down, we're ready to assemble the lines on the oil cooler. So to do this, we're gonna get some of that same thread sealant, apply a little bit on the threads of the oil cooler, and then afterwards, thread on the shorter line onto the driver side fitting of the oil cooler. You're going to want to repeat the same procedure for the other line. Now be sure to use the 135 degree fitting and not the 90 because the 90 degree fitting goes to the sandwich plate. So grab your thread sealant, apply some to the fitting and install the line. Now that the Mishimoto oil cooler and oil lines are installed, we can go ahead and remove the last under panel tray before installation of the oil cooler. This panel is held in by three bolts and four clips on the bottom side. Now that the last under tray is removed, we can feed the oil lines in behind the crash bar. And then we can slide the upper portion of the black bracket above and on the back side of the crash bar. So as you can see, the oil cooler is bolted up. And I actually found it easier to install the oil cooler from the top side, which means you don't have to remove this bottom paneling here, uh, which saves you a step. So from the front of the car, this is essentially how the oil cooler is gonna sit. So we have the bracket mounted up top, we have the oil cooler on the bottom, and the lines are fed underneath this little plastic piece. Now if you follow them, you can see they go underneath the headlight, and they're tucked underneath here. So if you come into the engine bay area, you'll be able to see how they're ran. So they're over top of these lights, above and around the windshield washer reservoir. And you can see they now come underneath the little ABS module. And you can see the fittings are right here. So if the lines have a good enough amount of slack, we should then be able to hook the lines up, secure everything in place, and then fire this thing up after we put engine oil along with our new oil filter in here. The next step is to detach one of the lines and fill the oil cooler with as much oil as possible. After that, you can reattach the line and fill the engine with engine oil. Now that the oil cooler lines have oil in them, it's time to fill up the engine. I prefer to use a funnel just to help make things a little bit easier. And I'm gonna be adding about five liters of engine oil. After putting in engine oil into the engine, we can go ahead and check the oil level. Put it back in and then pull it out and see the reading. Might be able to see it is just under full. So that's perfect. We are going to go ahead and make sure all the fittings are tight. Now that there's oil in the car, the only thing left is to reinstall the air box and we can turn on the car. After the car's been running for a couple minutes, go out and check the oil again and make sure it hasn't dipped below the low mark. If it hasn't, then you're good to go turn on the car let it run until the oil temperature hits 180 degrees. Now with this thermostatic oil plate, the oil in the oil cooler assembly won't circulate until the oil hits that temperature. Once it hits 180 degrees, you can get out, check the oil again, top up if need be. If not, then you're all set. All right, you guys, so oil cooler's all in. Proper amount of oil is all in there. The oil catch can is all installed. Bumper's back on, everything's driving, everything's working the way it's supposed to. So I have Luca's little OFT tablet here hooked up where you can see basically all the temperatures for coolant, you know, oil, literally everything, voltages, all that fun stuff. Um, I am noticing, just right off the back, a huge decrease in temps. So before the oil, if you were idling, it would stay around 210-ish degrees and it would get even hotter if you started beating on it. So when you're driving the car, the temperatures would get up to about 225 if it was a hot day. It's about 23 right now, so it's a nice warm day, but it's not super hot. If we went to a track 
in a day like this or even on a hotter day, that oil system would be pushed to its limits. This kit right now with the 180 degree thermostat installed in it is working fine. I'm driving and I'm looking at the temps. It's hovering at about 168, 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is awesome. That means that you can beat on the car, push it, but the one problem with that is that it's actually a little bit too cool. You want to get the engine oil up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit where the temperature of the coolant is warm enough that any moisture or water that's in the coolant will flash off and it will vapor off and then go into that catch can. So what does that mean? That means that we need to actually change out the thermostat that's in this kit with a different one. So Mishimoto sells a 200 degree Fahrenheit thermostat cooler for this kit. All that it is, is it's a replacement like $12 thermostat that you'd put in the car. This right now, at this setting, you know, it's good. The coolant temps are down, but to make it so that it's the most efficient way possible to get that oil circulating around the engine is that you want only oil. You don't want any moisture or any water inside that system. So an oil separator might work, but a simpler way and a much easier way to get this done is to get that replacement thermostat and put it in. But this is a huge decrease over the stock stuff. So this is a 19 row oil cooler that's made for this FRS. So if you guys live somewhere down south where you guys see temperatures way warmer than this and you beat on your car, an oil cooler is gonna be a definite must. If you guys don't have one, you're not gonna be able to keep those oil temps down. If Mishimoto, let's say, doesn't sell a kit for your car, you can still install a universal one, but it's still not gonna be the same ease of installation as a kit like this. So my Z, for instance, I can purchase an oil cooler kit, and I actually have one, and I'll be installing one very soon. As for this, though, I approve. larger displacement engine you have, the more the oil is going to get up to temperatures. So if that means that you have a little four banger and it gets warm really fast, that's good. If it gets too hot, that's no good. If you have a V6 or a V8 and you're idling and just cruising around and it's up to temps, if you beat on it, it will go over those temps really fast. So an oil cooler for my Z is going to be a must. But as for this install, as for both components, the oil cooler and the oil catch can, they're both really simple to install. The install doesn't take that long, and the parts themselves are really good quality. If you guys wanna find out more information about the tools or even the products you guys saw in this video, you guys can find more information in the description box. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.